so let's let's understand how these flows look um, <clears throat> because this is where you'll end up troubleshooting and this is where it gets pretty confusing so let's let's look at the um, two different parts of the DNS proxy flows that are going out so if we look at the the bottom down here see this yellow line so now we're looking at the actual the flows as they come into the land side and go into the proxy this is what you'll see so you'll see that if you can see my mouse hopefully you'll see the IP one will show the original source IP so your actual the user's desktop but the weird thing that you'll notice is that instead of let's say the user had uh, 44 44 44 44 configured in their DNS uh, configuration you won't see that in the flow table now it'll be in the flow details which I'll show you but you will not see the original destination DNS server in the flow table in the IP1 or IP2 positions you will see the IP of the uh, loopback so the Silver Peak is rewriting this. It's, cha it's changing this on the fly. And this is kind of some some interesting behavior that's different from a, mm, everything else we have in the product currently, I believe. Uh, so yeah, this this rewriting the destination IP, and you'll notice that it gets set to pass through unshaped. So this segment of the DNS proxy process you cannot control. This is done by a built-in policy or an SA map, the, the built-in policy, and you do not have control over this. However, this part, as the flow comes out, the top chart or top screenshot, this part you do control. In fact, you must control how the DNS uh, queries come out of the loopback and go out to wherever, wherever they're going. So that means that for every DNS query, you're going to get two flows. Well, not every, because what if it's if it's cached, for instance, you'll only see you'll only see the bottom one. But let's say that the D, that the domain was not in the cache, and the proxy needed to go out and query the remote DNS server. You'll see two flows, just like this. Um, now, so yeah, here you go. You see, it does show you the original destination DNS server, but it's buried in the flow details. So in this example, we're, we're coming off of 11.99. We're, we're getting intercepted into the DNS proxy. If we go and we find this flow here and we click on the flow details for it, we'll see DNS proxy processed, yes. And we'll see original destination IP. It'll show you what you know, where you were trying to go. Um, and then here's the coming out of the loopback portion. The, take the important takeaway here is that if you look at this flow, it doesn't look special. You, you, the only way you can even tell that this DNS flow came from the the local proxy is that it shows self down here, self LO0. But otherwise, you can see here that it's being treated policy just like anything else. You know, it's, you got a, uh, you're matching on an overlay, you got TX action. Um, it's all controlled by policy. Um, this feature here, the DNS cache thing that's shown in the local appliance UI is not the same as the proxy cache. This has more to do with what we do at the ABC level um, with regard to extracting domain names and intercepting DNS. You can have a max of four DNS servers. Uh, we send DNS queries to two of those servers simultaneously. I don't know how it picks the two. Maybe it's random. Um, if both of the servers don't respond in four seconds, send request to the two other servers. Uh, if no response in 10 seconds, then then nothing. I think th then the client the client has to handle the failure at that point. So whatever the client would do when all DNS fails is what will occur.